All right, welcome, welcome to another episode of Flipping Miami by Raul Balufe. I am your host, and today on the show, I have a special guest, friend of mine, uh, another Florida, another Florida guy from Tampa, Brett Buris. Really awesome dude. Um, met him a few years ago in a mastermind, and man, we I remember we. Um, I, I think I had just finished like presenting, and uh, he caught me outside, and he's like, "Hey, Ro, I got to talk to you about this." Uh, this this guy and he has this program and we kind of clicked man and i think it was maybe no more than two months later i was flying down to tampa to meet him at his house for a meeting and man he's just a genuine dude a uh, family guy been wholesaling kind of started pretty recently maybe i don't know less than three or four years ago and him and his wife worked together hand in hand from their kitchen table from their house and just absolutely crushing it actually doing the business going to meeting sellers buying and selling so this is a real dude to follow and a real dude to listen to. So um, with all that being said, Brett, I appreciate you, man. Thanks for coming on. Hey, Roll, man. I really appreciate it. I know. I, I remember when I grabbed you outside of that meeting and said, hey, man, I got to tell you about this. Yeah. And uh, I, knew, I knew I knew we'd get along when you said, great, I'm going to be at your house like in three days. And so you just came up and, man, we had some great meetings and uh, both of us in Florida. And so it's, uh, it's, yeah. it's been good, man. It's been It's been a good friendship. Yeah, it's been really cool. And we, and we still keep in touch by text and stuff. And actually, um, Brett reached out to me by text. I'm like, dude, I'm so glad you texted me. Let's 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 get on here. Um, yeah. But Brett, I, I want to. Um, I know we know each other on on a personal level, but I don't think I know this about you. Let, let's say that, and I want to get into kind of what your business looks like, and you know, marketing these types of things in a little bit. But let's say I would have met you like in high school. Uh, let's say me and you would have somehow connected. We went to a similar high school or something. Who was Brett back then, man? Like, were, you know, were you a wild child? Were you, uh, were you, did you have good grades? Uh, you know, did you play sports? Like, uh, were you shy? Were you outgoing? Like, who was Brett if I would have met you, you know, maybe like sophomore, junior, senior year, something like that? Yeah, so I grew up in New Orleans, Louisiana, and um, went to uh, – Grew up and went to a Catholic high school. Most people in New Orleans, you know, kind of Catholic and go to these go to these Catholic high schools, big rivalry schools. And I had a small group of friends. And you know, if I had to describe myself in high school, it was all about having fun. We made good enough grades to kind of get by, but man, <laughs> we love to have fun. We love to have a good time. That's really what I was all about. And we had a little trouble here and there, but mostly just having <laughs> fun. And um, Still, I'm still very close friends with the, the two or three guys that, that I went to high school with and um, played a little sports, but never really got serious about that. I, I, that kind of commitment, I was like, no thanks, man. I want my weekends to myself and you know, <laughs> we're going to go party and have a good time. And, and so, um, yeah, man, graduated high school in the early 90s and uh, went to college for one semester. And I guess it hit me like a ton of bricks. Like I was so eager to get out in the real world and, and give it a shot. Like I wasn't scared to go and try something. And I just saw sitting in a classroom, I saw that as delaying my opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and people say, well, do you, you know, now that you, you know, you're in your mid forties, would you have changed? Nope. I, I would not go back to college. It just wasn't for me. And so got, I, I, I quit going to college and, um, and, and I had this idea and it was a, it was kind of a silly idea, but um, <clears throat> I had this idea that I could kind of break New Orleans up into these little neighborhoods and I could hire guys to go sell advertising to the little, the small like mom and pop companies and businesses in these little neighborhoods. And then we do almost like a Val pack, like a, a mailer where there's multiple businesses in one mailer. Um, but we did it door to door. So we created these little coupons and this magnetic and you put it on your refrigerator for the pizza shop and the plumber and the barber, five bucks off, all this sort of stuff. And we were running this throughout these neighborhoods in New Orleans and I never really made much money, but, um, <laughs> but I didn't have a job, man. And I was happy. I was doing my own thing and pretty cool. That eventually evolved into, um, some real estate publications that we were doing, um, then the internet came along and I hired a guy right out of high school. He went to, um, to Ole Miss in Mississippi and he lived in New Orleans and he was a graphic designer. 
and uh, we hired him and we started building websites. And I eventually, that company grew and grew and grew and we did business for some pretty big companies. And I sold that business in early uh, in 2004, 2005. And the reason I sold that business was when I owned it, I did two rehab projects. I had equity in my own home and I pulled that equity out and I did a deal and I made money. Um, it's really funny. I made about 70 grand on this rehab project. And then a house came for sale right down the street from that rehab project. And I bought it and I lost about 30,000. <laughs> but the net of it all was that I liked it. And I made money on one and I lost a little money on the other, but the net was I made some money and I enjoyed it. And, and so we sold our, our advertising company. My wife and I've always worked together. We sold that business and went full-time into real estate in 2005. And we were buying and holding rental property and buying and flipping. Um, and we did that for well until 2008 came along. And in 2008, when the, when the bottom dropped out, I was re in the middle of rehabbing about two and a half million dollars of different property. Really? And it's about six different projects at once and the market fell apart and, um, and my whole life ended basically financially. Like I, I had a note back to the bank for all that money that, you know, I mean, it was, it was killing me and it was, it was, it was a really tough time. I had little, uh, three little kids and it was just a mess. And so anyway, we, you know, we, we, recovered from that. Um, and I went back into the marketing business, which was a place that I knew I could at least make money and survive and, and make sure Google. my something with Google, right? I remember. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, a buddy of mine owned a, a very niche digital marketing agency uh, up in New York. And he brought me on as a uh, senior vice president of business development. And we were a Google analytics certified partner and we did a lot of online marketing for some really big companies. And, um, and so I did that. I was the guy they put, you know, they put me in a suit and flew me all over the country to go pitch business and win, win accounts. Um, so people say, Hey, have you been here? I say, well, I've been to the airport there. That's about all, you know, I haven't, I never really got my way out of the airport, but, um, and I did that for, for seven years. I lived in new Orleans and I worked in lower Manhattan. Um, and I traveled back and forth and, you know, that's, it feels like a, a lifetime ago, but, um, I really got burnt out on that. And I, I did a couple of different things. And, and, um, the reason I'm in Florida is I had an opportunity to, to, uh, run a big uh, sales team at a software company. Mm. And that's kind of my background. That's, that's what I do and what I know how to do. And so I did that for a while and it was pretty clear that me and the owner, didn't see, you know, didn't see eye to eye and that sort of thing. And I learned about wholesaling. Um, mm. And this was in uh, 2016, toward yeah. the end of 2016. Um, a friend of mine, um, his stepson, he introduced me to his stepson who was early 20s and had just started his wholesaling business. And I'll never forget this. I, I said, man, call me when you get your first deal. Because I figured I would never hear from him again. And he had just started doing direct mail. And so I guess about a month and a half, two months went by and I got my phone rings and it's, it's my buddy, Josh. And he says, Hey, I got my first deal on the contract. And this is back in New Orleans. I was like, Oh, that's cool, man. And he told me in the neighborhood and I was like, dude, that's, that's pretty rough. Like I knew where this house was. He's like, well, we'll see what happens. He called me about a week later. Hey, I got a buyer guy bought it. We're going to close in two weeks. I'm making like 16,000 bucks. And I was like, wait, what? I said, all right, well, call me when you get your next one. I thought maybe he got lucky, right? So I said, call me when you get your next one. <laughs> so I don't know, man, like two, three weeks go by, he calls me again. Hey, I got another one. Call me two weeks later. Hey, I got a buyer. Hey, I'm closing. I'm going to make this. And I was like, dang. So, man, I got, I was like, all right, I got to look into this. And what I did was, is my brother's a real estate broker in New Orleans. So I hooked my brother up with this wholesaler. Mm -hmm. So my brother calls me like a month later and says, man, I don't know how this guy finds these deals, but he's finding deals. And my brother bought two deals from him to rehab. 
No. And then my brother's going to buy a deal. Like my brother knows what he's doing. So I was like, all right, this guy's legit. This is a legit business. So I immediately went and bought uh, Sean Terry's course and started yep. studying it. And we got started. And here's the thing I'll say, man, if people are watching this that are thinking about starting, there's a law. And, and, and the simplest way for me to explain it is if we put a seed in the ground today and we wake up tomorrow and curse the ground because the seed has not grown into something, that doesn't make the seed wrong. It makes us wrong mm. because there's a law of gestation and things have to go through a process. Mm. So we started planting our seeds and we didn't reap any harvest for a little bit over three months. Yep. Yep. There's a lot of, a lot of doubt sets in a lot of, you know, just a lot of stuff. And I was, I was putting direct mail on credit cards. So I, I didn't like have all this extra cash. I was, I, I was on faith yeah. spending money that wasn't even mine. It was, it was MasterCard's money. And so <laughs> we got our first deal. Um, a guy called me and said, uh, uh, got this house in Clearwater, Florida. Hmm. And I uh, said, okay, I'll go drive by it. His father owned it and passed away. It was an old, old probate deal. Like, like this house had gone through probate like 10 years earlier. And it was just sitting there. Wow. So I drive by it and I'm like, all right, I've run the comps. You know, I'm following the system. Call the guy back. And I'm like, okay, man, I'm, I'm interested. Um, how can I get in it? He's like, I don't know, man, and nobody's there anymore. And so I just had the balls to say, would you mail me a key? And he says, um, and he's hesitating. And I said, hey, let me ask you something. What could possibly be in that house that I would want? <laughs> and he says, well, nothing. I'll mail you the key. Because yeah. nobody had lived in it for like wow. 15 years. They don't teach you that in the course, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Sometimes you just got to get a little creative. So yeah. guy mails me the key. I go there, open the door, and it's a mess, but it's in a pretty good neighborhood. So I call him back, and he wanted 30000 And we went back and forth, and I bought it for nineteen. So it was a $19,000 house. Wow. And I, I sold it to a buyer uh, for $34,000. And, and, and here's what's crazy. I, I told the title, it's my, my first deal, right? I'm all excited. I told the title company that I was a wholesaler and that I was assigning the contract. So they said, no problem. We get to the closing date and they call me and ask me where my wire's at. And I was like, like what, what do you mean, where's my wire? Yeah, yeah, you need to fund this. We can't do this you have to fund it in close. And, and I was like, what? Well, I didn't have 19 in cash. <laughs> so oh. I called my buddy who taught, who, who told me about wholesaling and said, Hey man, can I borrow 19 grand for about 15 minutes? <laughs> and so I told him what happened and he's like, wow. yep, no problem. Just tell him to call me. So he wired 19 grand and then we got closed and they sent him his money back. And I, I got him a $200 gift card to Ruth's Chris to thank him <laughs> because if it wasn't for him, man, I wouldn't have gotten it done. <laughs> Three steak right there. Dude, bro, that's, that's a, that's a, I, I never heard this, right? That's a good story. And like, there was so many things I heard in that story. Like number one, I heard a leap of faith. Okay. You know, like you, you left, you know, you, you, you weren't like someone that wasn't used to making money, right? Like you were working good jobs. You had a good job in New York and you came to Tampa to run a big sales floor. You took a leap of faith. I heard there that um, you had to spend money on credit cards that you didn't have. So there's another faith, but like you had like the confidence um, to actually go out there and do that. And, you know, and also I love the, the, the thing you said about the seed and sprouting because um, things in life, you know, forget about like business right now. Just in um, if you're thinking about anything. Right. And if you think that things don't good things don't take time, you're absolutely mistaken. I mean, Think of, 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 of plants and trees, of, of, of anything, of evolution, right? That's a kind of an introspective way to think about it. But I love how you said it because 
how many get rich quick things do you hear nowadays? Especially, especially now during Corona times, I'm like, man, you guys are pretty messed up to like be selling like get rich quick the gurus, things. Man, the gurus are coming out of the woodwork. Wow, bro. I like, and, and it's funny because like I, I kind of have been looking at like the big time gurus, like uh, Grant Cardone's and these guys. They're not really selling anything right now. But the, the, the people selling stuff are kind of strange and whatever, that's kind of a different conversation. But I love that you told the truth. That's like, it took me three months to get a deal. I, I had doubt. I took a leap of faith. It was credit card money I didn't have. Um, you know, I hadn't done a wholesale deal before. I had just lost a bunch of money in real estate. But you, you went through the you went through the puzzle. You figured it out. You got a $19,000 house, sold it, made, you know, 13, 14 grand. So it's a beautiful story. And I, I really hope that people can can resonate that there's no excuses, man. You can come from any background. You can um, come from a good job, a bad job, doesn't matter. Um, and someone like Brett did this from home. Um, and, and, you know, that's that's an awesome story. So many good points just in that little phrase right there. Well, yeah, and Raul, I'll tell you that first year, in year one, we did over $700,000 of wholesale fees. Wow. And it was 40 something deals. Now I had, we, we did probably 90% of that business from direct mail. Mm. So, you know, I think you got to be really careful in this business, you know, that the, the trends swing all over the place. You know, what I'm hearing right now is texting, 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 and this and that. And, and look, that texting wave will hit the beach and then the next wave's coming. Last time it was RBM. Last time it was cold call. You just have to pick something that you feel like is good for you and your personality. Mm. And you got to go with it. Like you, the one thing we've never done is we have an unblemished record for three and a half years of never stopping the mail. Mm. Interesting. We changed the list. We've changed some things. We've changed the creative, maybe the quantity, but we've never stopped just pumping mail into the marketplace because mail has made me money. Mm, I love that. That's, that's, and you know, it goes back to like the marketing principles, consistency, um, and just, just getting your message out there. Uh, I love that. It, and Brett, so, and I want to kind of back up a little bit. So you, 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 you had these awesome jobs um, at a point you already kind of had some, some hustle in you, um, some sales, you had tons of experience in your belt. What was it like a moment in time? Was it, um, a, a chain of events that happened that you're like, right, I'm going to start this whole wholesale thing on my own. Me and my wife, we're going to get going on our own business. Cause you were, you were like, you had a good executive roles in different companies, but what happened in your life that you're like, all right, I'm going to take this leap and get this credit card and like go into business on my own with my wife. Like what was it one, one moment you can think of, or was it a, a couple different moments? What, what do you think that was that like helped you take that leap? Yeah. So those, those jobs for me, um, that was really out of character for me. Mm -hmm. Um, they were done. Um, you know, that first job in New York was really done out of, um, necessity as I, as we were, you know, entering that crash and I just, you know, I had to be able to provide and I knew that marketing was a business that I knew and I knew marketing at a very high level. So I didn't go find, you know, $200 a month accounts. I was, I was managing national level, you know, accounts for companies like Ruth Chris Steakhouse and all these big medical device companies and all this sort of stuff. So there was, there was big money on the table. And so there was an opportunity where I was, you know, I was earning significant six figure income with all that responsibility. But what happened to me was um, when I realized that this software company, this wasn't going to be a long-term thing because I was brought in there to grow it. And then we were going to sell it. That was the pitch that I got. And well, you were going to get like a piece of it or something. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Got it. So I have all these connections back in Manhattan. And so when the thing started to grow, I, I made one phone call and in three days I had a guy sitting at the table who buys these companies. And so the owner kind of flipped when that happened and he wow. started to feel like it was like this, like coup against him. Um, 
And so he ultimately fired me. Like he fired me like, like two weeks later. Yeah. It's really crazy. Um, so I was in a place, man, where I was away from home. I spent my whole life in new Orleans. My wife was from new Orleans. I had a big, one day I had a nice, a good job with a big salary. And the next day I didn't, I'm living in a penthouse condo in Clearwater beach. You know, my kids are in private school and I'm not like, I'm not in my hometown where I have relationships and network where I can go and just kind of, you know, stoke the flames and get some income going again. I'm like literally on an Island and I had to decide what I was going to do. Wow. And basically my wife said, I'm glad you got fired because you hated that job. Let's go to work. <laughs> and, and together we started this business and cranked on and cranked on. And, and I'm, I'm going to say this because this is, so that all sounds good. I, I, I'll share some of the, some of the mistakes, because if I could save people some of this pain and suffering, yeah. um, you know, I'd feel really good about that. So, one of the things that happened along the way was I have a background in business development, communication. So I went from sitting across the table from a executive level person of a fortune 1000 company to mm -hmm. sitting across the table from some guy who's two years behind on his taxes, can't pay his mortgage. So it wasn't very hard for me. Like solving his problem felt like kindergarten work compared to the problems that I used to solve. I was never intimidated by a homeowner. I was nothing because my world was $1,500 suits. I mean, dude, I wore, I wore $600 shoes. Like that's like, I showed up in places ready to roll, man. And so, and I'm not bragging about that. That's really yeah. stupid, but, but to go ask, a company for six, $700,000 a year, mm. you better have your stuff together, Jack, or you are going to get laughed out. And by the way, when I leave companies like IBM and all these other companies are coming in behind me to pitch with these big names. And I didn't, I wasn't working for a big name company. So anyway, you just had to look the part and, and have your stuff together. So anyway, sitting across the table from Bob and Mary, you know, who, who, you know, they can't hardly figure their way out of a wet paper bag for whatever reason. It was easy for me, to be honest. It was totally easy. But here's what happened. My results were so extraordinary yep. that when I went to add people to my business and their results were average or a little bit below average, I couldn't handle it. Like yeah. I was blowing people out left and right. Because for like two straight years, I would close one to one and a half out of three appointments. Wow. Yeah. So when you came to work for me and you were closing like one out of 10 appointments, I didn't like my brain couldn't understand it. Yeah. And then they'd come back and they'd be like, well, I said this and this. And I'm like, well, did you say this and this? No, I didn't say that. I'm like, it's the 15th time I told you to do it. You know, and so... I didn't give people room to grow and I didn't give them the support they needed. I just sort of chewed them up and spit them out because they couldn't hang yeah. with me. And then I realized like, well, that's cool and everything, but I'm going to be like by myself for the rest of my life because of these crazy expectations I have. And so for the people that are in the business and been in the business for a little while and they're by themselves, I think one of the things you have to do is hiring is it's a serious commitment yeah um to onboard properly and to vet and to find the right person but it's a huge commitment for the next three four five six months um i i believe in you know hire slow and fire fast i yep. believe in that 100 percent. but you have to put somebody in an environment where they can make success Mm. And bro, if they were as good as you, they'd be running their own business. Like, yeah. I mean, you know, eventually I had to like come to terms with that. So, you know, I'm here three and a half years later and I'm just kind of, my mindset's just now to a place where 
we've got two or three people coming on. I'm setting okay. up, you know, an ability to manage virtually. I'm literally reading books about <laughs> managing virtual sales teams and looking at these dashboard softwares and looking at the right yeah. video conferencing software because I want to get it done the right way. And, 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 that, so, and that's, man, I, you touched on a lot of good stuff again. Like this is a tough business to, because it's so transactional and because the deals can be big, um, you know, you can make 10 grand, but you could also make 40,000 or 80,000 on, on a wholesale or a flip or something. You, you have to like be mindful that having people on a high net, high transactional business can be a bit scary. It could be rewarding, but just you, all you have to just be mindful that that exists. So I think the way that you mentioned it was, was really awesome. Uh, Cause coming from you and, and you, um, you work, you work hand in hand with your wife and I want to get on that a little bit. So tell us a little bit about like, I know we're in, we're filming this in Corona times, but let's say, you know, before this or right after this and things are normal, hopefully again, normal, right? Um, um, what, what, what does your business look like nowadays? Like who, who's involved and what kind of things you're doing? And, and if you're in part of different businesses, you could also share that. Like, I know you do the wholesale. I don't know if you have rentals or flips anymore. I know you did some flips. Um, I know that, uh, I think you were getting involved in like some kind of online, uh, uh, online stuff. So I don't know, kind of share with us what your business looks like, uh, um, who's involved and things like that. Yeah. So, you know, we've consistently from home with me as the acquisitions and dispositions guy. And my, my wife's role is really, um, she's, she's got an engineering degree. So she really pays a lot of attention to the details. Um, she handles the accounting, even though this business doesn't really have like mind blowing accounting associated with it. Yeah, you, know, you gotta keep track of the numbers and make sure you got cash flow and all that sort of stuff. And yeah. um and so the way our business looks today is is we have a virtual assistant who's our leads manager. Okay. And so she takes the inbound call. She also has a significant number of tasks that are like lead generating type tasks. And so we've got her on she's got about six or seven standing projects that keep her busy generating opportunity, generating leads when she's not answering the phone. Uh, so I'll give you just one example of that. Yes. Um, we, um, we go to, Oh, I'll have her go to Facebook, all the different Facebook groups uh, every day. And she's looking at what other wholesalers are posting in Facebook groups. And she's looking to see if they're open to certain offers based on some criteria that we've given her because we have a hedge fund and they're not buying right now because of what's going on, but we have a hedge fund that buys a little higher than the average local buy and hold guy. So a lot of times we can work out a deal with another wholesaler and, and get the deals done. So she's got tasks like that. They're, revenue generating tasks that Love she does outside of answering the phone because the thought of somebody sitting around staring at the phone waiting for it to ring and that's their job forget about it like that's that's a waste of money so so she's based in the philippines um and so then there's there's me so she takes the call qualifies them a little bit gets them into the crm i take it from there and uh, up until a, a couple of weeks ago, really, our only offer was was a wholesale offer. Um, we've since added some things, and uh, that's brand new, so I won't get into that. But um, so that's her, that's me. Um, I've done a really good job of building a buyer database. So yeah, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah. So we've never struggled, and and we've averaged three, four, sometimes five deals a month. Um, I'm pretty good at negotiating on the front side with the seller. So our average is, you know, seventeen, eighteen thousand dollars a deal. Okay. And we don't have a lot of overhead because we work from home and we don't have a lot of employees and that sort of thing. So people say, Oh, you only do three deals. So, well, yeah, I, I, I took in 50 grand and I spent 10. Right. You know, Brett's going to be okay. Nobody needs to worry. <laughs> and so, um, so that's it, man. That's, that's the whole team. One of the things that I've done, over the last couple of months is I've had some people come to me that have heard a podcast like this um, and say, Hey, 
will you help me? And so my answer is the same for that every single time. If they're in Tampa, I say, uh, I'm going to be at Bel Air Coffee Shop on Indian Rocks Road at 8 a.m. I'm going to be there to have a cup of coffee. If you show up and want to talk, I'll talk to you. If you don't, I'm just going to have my cup of coffee and go home. And so <laughs> these two guys, that way I'm not like getting stressed out about it or whatever. So these two guys show up, man, in their 20s and they're excited and they, they're calling on lists and they're calling on like municipal lien lists and all this crazy stuff. And, um, and they got this deal and they're strangling this deal to death, man. They're going to lose this deal. So I'm like, guys, you don't need to run a wholesale business. You need a mentor. You need somebody to help you because you don't have any money. You don't have any anything other than you got a lot of energy. So like guys like that, like I've brought them on. And I'm coaching them and teaching them and I give them little jobs to do. And if they, if they like kick ass, I'll give them a little more responsibility and a little more responsibility. And I saved that one deal they had, I saved it and we got it closed and everybody made some money. And so they were really happy about that. But those guys are about to go into an acquisitions role for me. Oh, cool. Uh, But I've been training them since the end of last year. Like, I won't let them talk to a soul yet. And three times a week at seven 30 in the morning, we do one hour of sales training. Wow. And so they're like, they're ready, dude. They know the content as good as I do. They're ready to go. And so, so that's going to be a new thing for me. Really? Like we're going to, we're going to roll these guys out and, and get them on the phone. So, that. uh, but that's the team from home. It's me and my wife and, and a lead leads manager. I love it. I love it. You see like, so simple like that keep it keep it stupid simple kind of quote like i feel like that's like your mantra you know you should have that like right in front of your computer and 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 it's so easy to complicate it once uh especially with so many shiny objects you know and um one of the reasons i do the podcast is i love to connect with people um i love to speak to like-minded people high achievers the best in the field but at the same time like i like to have as genuine as i can conversations so people could see that uh, sometimes the shiny objects aren't that shiny. And um, notice that Brett has stuck with mail for three years without stopping, without altering, which is just so awesome. It's kind of like me with MLS. I just, I've always sent offers for five, six years. Like I never stopped. Um, and that was just my one channel. That's Brett's one channel. I would choose one channel if I were you guys. Like, why not? You know, what do you have to lose? Do it. And and Brett's such a good example, man, from his house uh, with his wife. And, and I, you know, I'm not married or anything yet, but I know a lot of my listeners are, and they might be thinking about starting the business or expanding, and they don't want to hire anybody. They don't have enough money yet. And I understand that. How have you been able to work with your wife um, and be able to like, create that good synergy? I know that um, it seems like that her engineer personality and your like visionary personality works really well, but I mean, besides, besides that personality thing, like what kind of practical things have you guys been able to develop that you guys could like separate work and family and just be able to crush it and do, you know, 700 K and also first year. It's like, you guys worked hard and you guys lived together, you know, like, and a, Brad has a beautiful family, by the way, with I think three girls, right? Two or three. Yeah, girls. three girls. I remember I met them. So how, how have you been able to do that, man? So I don't know that we've done a great job of that whole, like, keep it all separated part because <laughs> sometimes, man, you know, when you're a small business person, you know, sometimes it's got the potential to to rule and reign over your life and you really got to like beat it back, you know, because it'll, it'll take over. But, but what I would say is this, is that when, when you're thinking about working with your, your spouse, I think one of the things that's really important is like up front kind of laying it all out there Mm. because one of the things that I see is one spouse doesn't agree that it's a good idea for the other spouse to go start a business or, or he has doubts in her or her in him, which is all normal. And in this country or in this world, like, Corporate America has created this warm womb for you to live in. All your nourishment comes from there. It's never going to get too cold. It's never going to get too hot. And and a lot of people get very comfortable with that. And then one day your husband comes home and says, 
oh, I watch this thing on the internet and I'm excited about it. And would you help me? And you know, the wife's like, are you out of your mind? Like, we don't have money for that. <laughs> right. And so I think, I think you have to respect the other person's point of view. And if I've screwed anything up very often, it's forgetting that my wife is brilliant. She graduated number one in her class in engineering, which never wow. happens for women. She has a different perspective. Women have different perspective than men. And, and I've often ignored that. And I think considering your spouse's perspective and giving them the respect of really explaining yourself and your plan and what you want to do, I think goes a long way to get them on board with you to move forward because then there's nothing worse. And I see it out there all the time nothing worse than having a spouse who's not on board, who's basically like an anchor dragging you back. Right? Yeah. The world is going to make it hard enough. The last thing <laughs> you need to do is come home to somebody that's making it even harder. Yeah. So get some upfront agreement together with all that. Love that. So that you don't have to, you know, beat each other up along the way. I love that. That's a beautiful, like, that's a beautiful, beautiful answer right there. Honestly, just like, be upfront, be like, tell the truth, be honest with each other. This is like, and, and for the people listening to this, that like, if you're actually in it for the long haul, which, you know, Brad and his wife obviously are. And, you know, Brett, Brett's like the kind of guy, like I know him personally, he's the kind of guy that like goes all in. He's, if you do something, you're going to be like top notch. So if you're the kind of person that wants to go all in, like you, you have to like think about it for the long haul. You got to think about it for the long haul. If, if your wife and your spouse is, really not supportive of your dream and you really need to do that and you need to you need to be up front and you need to think about that um right. and i'm so glad that's that's like hardcore advice but that's the truth man i, I think that's but you know what bro let me say this that same advice is true when you're talking to sellers yeah you know so people say i'm not really good at sales here's what what i say to people if you're doing something that's generating leads coming into your business so let's use direct mail paid search, whatever's generating inbound, right? It's a process of sifting and sorting. Mm. Do you really think that your sales ability is going to convince someone that doesn't want to sell their house to sell their house to like, come on, man, you're like a total stranger. <laughs> so you don't control the situation, but you have influence over the situation. Mm. That's two very different things. Right. So when my daughter was one, I controlled it. Mm -hmm. Well, she'll be 18 this summer. Now I have influence. I don't have control. I have influence. Uh, that's very two good. very, very different things. Right. So when that call comes in, just understand you don't control it, but you have some influence over it. And in your ability to ask questions, in your ability to very quickly determine if this is a motivated seller determines how much frustration you're going to have in this business. Wow. I do it all the time. I get in the middle of these conversations with somebody who's never going to sell me those. Look, man, it's Florida. The next 80 year old guy that calls me probably just wants to talk. <laughs> he ain't got nobody to talk to. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> right? so Nobody's visiting. It's coronavirus. And you know, and he's got somebody to talk to. Yeah. And that's okay, man. Sometimes I'll just BS with old dude, old lady, I don't care. Cause you know, it's just, it's, it's whatever. It's just being a human, but yeah. I'm not like confusing myself that they're a seller. That's, right. That would be silly. So I'll tell you this, this, I was telling you about that deal in, in um, Fort Lauderdale. And so I'll, I'll use it as an example. So this guy came to me cause I have a, I met a guy who cleans houses, like quarter houses and stuff. And, um, one day, and this is just this is another example of planting seeds. I said, hey, man, if, if, any, if any people that you ever clean a house for want to sell those houses, just let me know. So one day he calls me. He's like, hey, I got this house in Tampa. So he connects me to the lady that the heir, somebody had died, he connects me to the heir. I talked to this lady, work out a deal, sell it three days later to a buyer. I made like 17000 bucks. Wow. Well, I, I pay that guy. I give him a rip, man, a, a fat rip for sending me those deals. Why not? Right? So he loves it. So he sends me deals all the time. So he sends me this deal in Fort Lauderdale. So the, the brother 
of the deceased owner calls me and says, uh, Hey, I was thinking about, you know, we got to sell this house. I'm up here in Arkansas, blah, blah, blah. Super nice guy. So the guy says, you know, we start talking and I say, well, what, what do you think it's worth? He says, I think it's worth about 300. He was, he was way off by like a lot, but I didn't say anything. I'm like, okay, how'd you come up with that? So he's talking to me. I'm sorry, well, I'm gonna go do my research. So when I come back to him, I say to him, I've done my research. So I'm a professional. I'm going to go do my research. Right. And I say, here's what I've seen. I saw that houses with two bathrooms and a pool and bigger sell for well into the mid 400s. But your house has one bathroom, no pool, and it's smaller. So I can't imagine how you could get 300 for it. So he says, well, what would you give me? I said, well, I could pay you 200. And literally in two seconds, he says, okay, I'll take 200. Send me the contract. So we, we had a hundred thousand wow. dollar drop wow. because of a couple of reasons. One, I built rapport with him. He's a retired college baseball coach. I knew the story about his brother um, and how his brother had gotten sick and all this sort of stuff. He must have said 20 times in the phone call, I'm way up here in Arkansas. I can't do anything with this house. And I would say, what, what do you mean by that? I can't show it. I can't go. I can't do any of it. You know, and so I was, I view it like this when I'm talking to sellers. There's multiple exits. They can jump out and, right, they can say, I'm going to hire a realtor. They could say, for sale by owner. They could say all kinds of stuff. When I'm talking to a seller, this is the vision I have in my head. We're in a room. There's about 10 doors that we can exit from. They're all open. My job is to mutually close and lock the door with the seller. Mm. Hey, have you thought of hiring a realtor? I don't want to do that because, because, because. Well, why is that so bad? Because, because, click, we lock that door. We're going to go over here to this door. Why don't you fly down and hold the house open for a few weeks? Coronavirus, I can't. I, I don't really get out. I'm 76. I, clunk, close that door. The whole conversation is walking around that room, barring all the exits. Lock, 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 lock. One exit that was left open. That's me. I'll do this. I'll do this. I know the cars are there. I'll, I'll get the cars towed. I know it's full of garbage i'll pay to get it clean but that my door started to get wider and brighter and we just walked right through it together right but just like the whole white thing and the up, being up front and being transparent most people in this business that seller says 300 and they get into this like spastic useless conversation and they start defending and all I said was, oh, that's interesting. How'd you come up with that number? And then I said, okay, I'm going to go do my research. Then I come back with my facts. You don't have to agree with my facts, but they're facts. You want to fight with facts? Good luck. Yeah. You know, so it's like I, it's, we were either going to do a deal or not do a deal, right? But, but we're, going to, we're going to lock these doors. But what people don't understand is this, is when you're in that circular room with those sellers, and there's 10 open doors. Maybe there's five, maybe there's 50. I don't know. The vast majority of the time, the seller is not gonna walk out of your door. Mm. If they did, man, we'd be closing like nine out of 10 calls. First. There's a reason they're gonna exit a different way. Don't go over there and fight and try to lock the door and keep them away and don't do it. Let them out. Get to that part as fast as possible. Why? Right there. Because you got another 10 people to call. You got another meeting to go to. You got another networking deal to go to. You got another cold yeah. call to make. I Get them out. Love, 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 love that answer. I mean, and one of the things, and that's awesome, like case study there. One of the things that I do, and I'm sure you do something similar, right when I get to the motivation part. So, you know, property detail, I get to motivation. Oh, hey, you know, this looks like a nice place. Why do you want to sell? 
or what's got you looking to sell it, blah, 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 blah. And then I'll say, I don't, regardless of what they say, I'll say, and you never thought of listing it or renting it? Like, those are the first words that come out of my mouth, like right away. Cause I want to know if they're like, oh, I'm already have a realtor. I'm working with a realtor. I, it's on the market for rent. Like, I want to know that like in the first four minutes, you know? And yeah. I think you get that once, I'm sure you've talked to hundreds of sellers. Once you get, once you talk, start talking to so many sellers, you'll be like, I need to know this fast because I mean, sellers can ramble and that's fine, but you don't want to be a part of like some ramble when they already have it listed or they're going to list it that afternoon exactly. or something. And I think, but you, you know how I think people hurt themselves or is they get on the, the phone rings and they, uh, uh, an REI person or a wholesaler picks it up and they've already created an expectation for themselves. Like I, I'm going to buy this house. Mm. Well, man, that's like planned failure because if you think about how many deals you get, how many phone calls does it take to get a deal? It's a lot of phone calls to get a deal. Yeah. So if you change the perspective, you let the pressure out of the room. What if you picked up the phone and said, my job is to quickly determine if this even has the possibility of being a deal? I like that. It's a good right? Answer. So now you're just like, beds, baths, what's the situation? What's going on? Have you considered listing it? Have you considered, have you considered, okay, tell me more about that and tell me more about that, right? And so I think we just set ourselves up like, ring, ring, I got to get it okay, I got to get this house under, like, come on, man. Like that's, you just setting yourself up for big disappointment. Really good. I have like, just like a question for you and then, and then we'll wrap it up here. Dude, Brett, so we, we've talked a lot about like the, how you started and then now you're trying to scale. We spoke how you, how you work with your wife. You have a very small niche team, uh, how you're training people, all these things. And we spoke about sales, but I want to take it a little bit bigger. So let me think, let me think about this. So like, Let's say, I, what do you think about when I tell you hundred million dollars, right? If I tell you, um, I know it's not everyone's ambition. I'm not even sure it's my ambition, but I just like to get wheels turning. When you think of a hundred million dollars, like where does your mind go? Like how do you earn or become worth or et cetera, a hundred million dollars? Like what, what, where does your mind take you? Yeah. So, you know, the thing that's been really interesting about this, this pause that we have in our, our life and our economy. I was talking to a friend of mine who lives down at the beach in Alabama and he's like, man, you know, it'd be a good idea. We ought to do this every year, like six weeks. Nobody does anything. I think life would be a lot better. I'm like, yeah, you know what? You're probably right. <laughs> <All> right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think a couple of things. I, I, I think when I study the people in my life that have made or are making significant amounts of money. So I live 15 minutes from a, a very close friend who's a two and a half to $3 million a year earner. Um, nice. He's got multiple businesses and he's got an income at that level. Okay. So we're talking, you know, very few people. And the thing that I see in him is he has figured out a way to replicate and duplicate himself. And, and unless you're an inventor or, um, you come up with some ingenious thing or you can sing or something. Uh, <laughs> you're not going to get into big wealth unless you duplicate yourself. And, and so when, when you start to talk about, you know, big numbers, I see a couple of things. I see a path that must involve other people, a path that requires me to grow as a person so that I can help other people grow. Mm -hmm. Right. So, you know, why do I read every day and why do I do all the things I do every day? Because I have to grow as a human being. It's my job. They didn't teach you this in high school. Sorry. That's what you get with a, you know, government education. They just don't, they don't teach you this stuff. On another note, you know why people are like wigged out about their kids being home and all that right now? It's because, our whole life, we're taught to stand in line, stand in a straight line in school, raise your hand when you want to say something, sit in one spot, when the bell rings, eat, when the bell rings, stop eating, when the bell rings, go home. And you grow up as an adult and you do the same exact stuff. 
and we fake ourselves out like as if we're not, but we're being told what to do day in and day out. You get coronavirus and now your kid's at home and you work from home and everybody's losing it because there's not rigor and structure. Yeah. But as human beings, we weren't meant for that. We were meant to be free and we were meant to, we weren't even meant to work this much, man. That's the honest truth. Yeah. But anyway, what, what I see is duplication, man. And, and so I'm, I'm super excited right now because the things that I was thinking about in terms of a, a, a more national view of this business in a, in a virtual view of this business, those are things that I was thinking about well in advance of this quarantine stuff. But this quarantine stuff has put an accelerant on it and forced me to really speed up that thinking. And so we've totally flipped our model. We're totally virtual. Even if coronavirus wasn't here, I'd be doing this. And so we've retooled this business to where, you know, we're getting contracts first and then sending inspectors out and, and taking yep. pictures and then renegotiating if we have to, um, putting lock boxes and getting buyers out there. And if we're not in our market, we're using realtors or um, inspectors to manage the buyer walkthrough of the properties. Um, and so the way I was doing the business before was not scalable. I could have done three, four deals a month and had a very nice income. Very nice forever, but it's, it's never going to grow past me. And so, so all of this is causing me to say, okay, what do I need to do? How do I need to grow? It's not somebody else's problem. It's me. Yeah. I need to grow and mature in certain places so that, I can pass this on to others and give them an opportunity. So how do I make a million bucks a year? I, I need to go teach three, four people how to make 150 to 200 a year. Mm. That's the only way I look at it. I don't look at it any other way. Oh, that's good. And yeah. so that's the, that's the path we're on. I love it. I love it. That's, and, and, and that's exciting, man. It's because it, because it's, it starts with you, you got to grow first and you know, the, the, Oh, it's on your mind and, and things. It's, it's fucking real, right? Like tonight, it's real, man. Like it is the only difference between you and I and people like, you know, uh, I don't know, the top millionaires in the world to not say any names. It's just really what's in our minds and, and the habits that we start doing and the actions we can sit, we, we take and the confidence we, we, we indulge in us. So dude, that's good. And so that last kind of thing before we wrap it up, now we'll go, we went huge. Now let's go on the last small scale and then we'll finish it. Let's say they took away your money. Uh, Donald Trump went in your bank accounts and said, hey, Brett, I don't like you, man. I'm <laughs> taking your stuff. Um, and I'm going to give 1200 bucks to a certain... No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but let's say your, your bank accounts are wiped out tomorrow, but you know what you know. You have your experience. What would you do nowadays, um, you know, post-corona, regular times? What would you do nowadays to get a deal or to, like, get back in real estate in a, an efficient way? Or what would, what would you do to a deal and start paying bills again? if you have maybe just three to 500 bucks in your pocket and, uh, and the knowledge. So I would be a networker. Um, I would be at every networking meeting and I would, I wouldn't talk much in the beginning. I'd get to know people and I'm sure, you know, every, everywhere is the same. So in Tampa, St. Pete, some really good guys, that have been in the real estate investing world for a very long time. They have no interest in you when you show up to the meeting for the first time. Wow. That's true. But if you take your time and you get to know people, here's what happens. The most respected real estate investor in the Tampa St. Pete area, I won't mention his name, but he's in his seventies. He's been at this for 50 years creative real estate deals. He cannot stand wholesalers because most wholesalers are full of it. And, you know, they just, Whatever. I'm the only wholesaler he's ever recommended to anybody. And the reason for that is because I've taken the time to build a relationship with him. Mm. And I've taken the time to build relationships with others. So for example, I got a call earlier this week guy called me to sell me a rental property. He thinks I'm a buyer, right? So I don't play some game like I'm a buyer. I just say, hey man, that's not what I do. But here's what I have. I have a buyer database. 
would you like to put that house out to my buyer database? Put it out to the database, we get it sold. That guy couldn't sell that house to save his life, but all I did was step <laughs> in the middle. I stepped in the middle. I made some money. I think I'm gonna make like uh, $2,400. It's not a big deal. Right. But I literally invented $2,400 in front of my face with no cost, no nothing. I sent one email out. And so if I was starting from scratch, everybody in every networking meeting would know who I am. Everybody in every Facebook group. And I'm not talking about slam, bam, thank you, ma'am. I'm talking about building relationships, right? Hey, Raul, here's who I am. Here's what I do. If I can ever help you, please let me know. And I'm never going to take you off my list. I'm going to call you in a week. I'm going to text you. Hey, what you got? What you looking at? You got anything good? Hey, I'm talking to this guy. He's got this. You know anybody that would want this? Mm. And I'm just, I would be making these connections nonstop. Mm. Just connections, that. connections, connections. Until I got some money going to where I could pick a marketing channel. Yeah. And I'd probably pick something that wasn't as expensive as direct mail. I mean, if I really just had a few hundred bucks a month, I'd probably right. use a texting platform or ringless voicemail or something like that to get the business going. But man, and, and let me tell you guys, you listen to this, like what Brett just said, not only is it gold, but it's free, you know, like to go to a real estate meetup or very low cost. Some might charge you like five bucks or something, but yep. it's, it's almost always free. Or if you go on meetup.com, um, I mean, even me, I host monthly meetups for free, um, to the community and I get like 20, 30 people a month and, um, I get some wholesalers, I get buyers and stuff, but you can go on meetup.com or you can search up, you know, if you're in Tampa, number one, connect with Brett, but or let's say you're in like, I don't know, Wukata, Kansas. I don't even know that that's a real place. Go to the uh, investing club, Wukata, Kansas, and just go meet people. And that line was beautiful. Use that same exact line say, Hey, my name is Raul. My name is Brett. Um, if I can help you, let me know. But then don't stop there. Text him. He can say, hey, do you, are you looking at any deals? Do you have any deals? Um, I just saw Raul. He has a new deal under contract. Do you, you think you might have a buyer? I can connect you guys. And then you work. That is free. And it's, it's like you said, you can make money literally out of thin air. Man, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's exciting. exciting. It but. But Brett, um, thanks for coming on again, bro. Um, and if, if people were in Tampa or if you wanted to, to follow you or reach you or um, connect with you somehow, what would be the best way that people can, uh, can do that? Yeah, so probably through email. So my company is Superior Real Estate Solutions. Okay. And if you Google that, um, you know, you'll find me very, very easily. Um, and my email is Brett, B-R-E-T-T at superior real estate solutions um and uh, that's probably the simplest way i'm i'm old man i'm like 46 so i don't i don't have like an instagram handle or anything <laughs> you can just you can just email me and I, I i promise i'll get back to people but um yeah man i'd love to connect um yeah. I, I love you know any way that i can help i will especially if there's some mutually beneficial thing that we can do together yep. um you know, I'm, I'm happy to look at that and, and, or just happy to give, you know, people just not advice. I don't really do advice, but I'll share experiences with people and sometimes that helps and, yeah. you know, sort of thing. So I'm happy to do that. Love that. Thank you, man. Thank you. So guys, I'll put it on the show notes, superior real estate solutions.com and Brett at superior real estate solutions.com is, is the email. Sure. Awesome. So I'll put it on there. Email, email the, the old geezer. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, mess with you. He'll get back with you. He's a really good dude, honest guy, really been doing business for a while. Um, just absolutely crushing it. Awesome dude. So I will keep you guys posted. Thank you, Brett. And You're thank welcome. you guys for listening. If you're listening to this on iTunes or Spotify or Stitcher, you guys could also check this out on, on our YouTube channel, Raul Belufe, or on the website, raulbelufe.com. Thank you guys. And on to the next episode. All right. Take care. Peace.